So <clears throat> to start with, um, to be quite frank, I had a hard time figuring out this because I couldn't think of anything other than reflecting on my own life and my own practice and my own business. Uh, so that's actually what I'm going to do. I, am, I don't have something to tell you how to do it or what to do. I'm going to tell you how I did something. And if that resonates, then cool. But I am going to ask you one thing. What are you a reflection of? And this doesn't necessarily have to be you. It could be, what is my business a reflection of? What is my art practice a reflection of? What is my community a reflection of? But I just want you to think about that. So a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm Karen and Sawyer. And uh, this is where you can find me at Pierce Express. I own a print and design studio and I like to take nap. I am from Bremerton. I named my company after this big crane. It says Pier 6 on the side. Uh, I, let me see what I had to say about Bremerton. Um, doo -doo -doo, big green crane. Okay. I was, I was born and I grew up here. Uh, I left for about 10 years and then I came back and I feel pretty, I feel pretty strongly about the idea that you leave something better than you found it. And so I work a lot to make Bremerton a better place. Um, the other thing is I did also meet my husband. I found out I was pregnant and my parents live here. So that also is a reason for staying. <laughs> um, so one of the things I found printmaking in college and actually, you know what? I'm not there yet. Sorry. <laughs> I found printmaking in college. And one of the things I love about it is printmaking is by nature a multiple. It's really difficult to make one of a print. In fact, it's more cost effective to make many. The more you make, the cheaper it is. Uh, the other thing I like about it is it's something that anyone can do. You can do it in your kitchen with a wooden spoon, or you can do it like I do it on a fancy machine. It spans the gambit. Um, however, there is an issue with printmaking and fine arts, and that is that there's not a lot of jobs for that. So what I have done is I make my living $6 at a time with greeting cards. And now we're ready for that. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so this is the first thing I ever designed. And it's cute, it's fun, I was pregnant. Uh, it's kind of what I thought needed to be, right? I was like, this is what people are gonna buy. It sells okay now, but at the time it was a good seller. Uh, and this is what I thought was greeting cards. Um, selling greeting cards is hard. I was, I had a baby about Maeve's age, um, and I was listening to a podcast, and the podcast was about these women who were doing what I was doing for a living. And it was specifically one about childcare. And I was like, oh great, this is, they're gonna tell me how to be a mom and a business owner. Well, their answer was that they had someone look after their kids, right? I couldn't afford that, and I burst into tears. My business ran very slow for a long time, just because what I decided I needed to focus on is my child. You know, I look at a lot of other businesses and I think about why am I not there? Why haven't I done that? And this was a particularly hard time for me because every moment I would get some steam, something would happen. My daughter would get and start teething. My daughter wouldn't sleep through the night, whatever. And it always felt like I couldn't keep up. Um, but I was putting through that for a little while. And the next thing that happened, <laughs> so the reason I put this up is because the next thing that happened was cancer and cancer isn't fun to talk about. <laughs> so in, so I found out that I had cancer in my leg and what it was going to require for me is going to require surgery that made it so that I wouldn't be able to walk. I would need to get physical therapy. I was going to be out of commission for quite some time. Now, I don't know if anyone here has done printmaking, but a lot of that happens on your feet. So the question was, how on earth was I going to grow my line? My line was just beginning to be in stores. It was going to be, um, I was getting more, more styles. And to print all these things, it takes a while. Every color is printed separately. And I had to look at myself and what was going on and decide what was important about my line, what was important about my art. 
So for me, as I talk about this, my business and my art and my life are all kind of one and one and the same. Some people I, I find for my own spiritual well-being, I make my art for business. I like it. I love to sell my product. And so when I talk about what is creative for me, it goes hand in hand with my business. That's just how I run. That's how I do it. I like to see my art in the hands of others. Um, so the question was, what was essential? What was essential about me? What was essential about my art? What was essential about what I was putting out into the world? And as a printmaker, you know, I, in art school, I was taught to be an artist. <laughs> you had to really rough it. <laughs> um, you had, you know, you had to, it was not necessarily the starving artist, but it was, you know, the fine artist. The, you couldn't sell out, right? You couldn't sell out, you couldn't make money, you couldn't do these things. You had to be the one working hard at your medium. And I, I love printmaking, it's fun, it's great. However, one of the things that I decided to do is I turned over my printmaking to someone else. I sent out my cards. It was more expensive. Uh, it was difficult for me to do to look at my cards and have them come back and know that I didn't print them. Especially when, yeah, I don't know if uh, I've been at a show and everyone's like, did you make this? Well, yeah. Did I run the press? No, but yes. <laughs> and so what I had to realize, what is more important was my message. What is something no one else can do? No one else can put out the message. No one else can make that. What is Pierce Express? Pierce Express is me. Is it my, is it me actually running the press? No, even today, I don't run the press. Because uh, the other thing I found is my weight of it, perfection lifted. That was someone else to deal with. Uh, my costs at the time raised. However, my production ability went up, right? And so over time, my production costs went down because I was able to do that. I was able to make more designs. I was able to focus on healing. Uh, I was able to focus on my daughter, all those things. So I would love to say that it's just been lovely since then. <laughs> but it hasn't. Uh, this is, I, who knew that running your own business is an uphill battle? <laughs> I certainly didn't. But I don't know if anyone remembers this year. This was a, this was a kind of a moment. Uh, so in 2020, I had a pretty thriving business. I had some wholesale partners, I was doing shows, I was, it was working out, I was getting my name out. And then, um, again, I, I, I hate to bring sad things into this, my brother suddenly died. So for me, this rocked everything. I'm the person who takes care of my parents. I live literally three minutes from them. Um, it was one day he was here and the next day he wasn't, just like that. And it stopped everything. I didn't make, I, like it stopped everything between COVID. Now there were some businesses who, especially in the card industry, because turns out if you can't see your friends, what can you do? You can send them a card. So there was a lot in the card industry that it was their best year ever. People were wanting to shop local, buy online. For the life of me, I couldn't make a card. I couldn't get the packing. I couldn't do any, it didn't make sense to do it. Why would, why would I do it? What was I saying? What could a pun say? when people are dying every day. Nothing. You're like, what could, what could it do? Um, and so, frankly, yeah, I stopped drawing for a year. I didn't make anything. I gardened. And when I say what was my creative outlet, I made a really big garden. It's kind of too big now. But <laughs> at the time, I had time. Uh, and I just stopped. There was nothing I wanted to draw. Drawing, to me, isn't something simple. There are some people, especially in art school, I saw a bunch of people that could just draw all the time. You know, they were sitting in their notebooks drawing. That is not me. For me to sit down and actually make something that I want to make can be a struggle. It is something I have to do. It's who I am. But it can be a struggle to actually sit down and make that thing. And with this, I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I don't want to do it. It's hard for me to do. Um, Making something cute and funny isn't what I want to do. So a year after a year went by, you know, 2021 was starting to look better. And I started looking at what I wanted to make again. And I started thinking about 
what I wanted to do. So I, again, making sometimes is, is a struggle. Less so now because of this. But I had an idea of what the world wanted as a greeting card. I've worked for greeting card companies. I've worked for printers who print greeting cards. I, I am friends with lots of greeting card companies. They're cute, they're punny, they're adorable. They're can't, you can't wait to give them to your, your mom or whatever. And I thought for a long time, that's not what I made. I didn't make realistic looking things. I didn't make cute looking things. Uh, I, I don't draw like that. That's just not who I am. I can't tell you how many times I heard in art school, it could be better, you know, could do better. Uh, because at the time, especially, really realistic drawing was in style. Mm -hmm. So I love, I don't know uh, if anyone's heard about Mary Blair. Yeah. Um, so I love mid-century artists. Mary Blair, especially, Mary Blair designed like at the small world, okay, those little, little dolls with the little eyes. Uh, and what I love about it is they use nothing to create something. It's weird, it's funky. There's this picture in my mind that I have, I should have put it in here, of Mary Blair, and she did a sketch from the fairy godmother from Cinderella. It's like a triangle and like a little chisel mouth. And like, <laughs> I don't know, it's nothing. It's nothing, but so obvious at the same time, it's a fairy godmother. And that is how I draw. I draw in chisels, I draw in, it's one of the things I like about printmaking, especially carving. I can just chip away at an image when I draw, that's how I draw. And suddenly I was like, what if, what, what if I drew how I wanted to draw? So I started drawing funky things. Uh, this was the first thing, the Zodiac series. And you know what? I, I really liked it, it felt right. It felt good. Each one was exciting to draw for once. And I put them out in the world. Meh. But that's okay. I love them. I like seeing them out there. But it gave me the okay to draw goofy things. <laughs> <laughs> Which turns out people do like goofy things. And I'm pretty goofy. So, and important things. Thanks. So, what could a pun say to the world? And the answer to me was not that much. I'm not saying that I don't have them. Things are still, there's still a big deal and you know, you, aw shucks, thank you, it's an oyster. <laughs> you know, people still love a pun, it is a greeting card. Uh, but this is where I want to resonate with my art. Whether it's something that I am making to put on a greeting card, whether it's a notepad, whether it's a drawing I make, whether it's a poster I make. I want the world, I want to connect. And at the end of the day, that's what I love about greeting cards and that's what I love about printmaking. What is a greeting card? When do you give it to someone? Oh wait, you give it to someone. Oh, except for unless you're me, hoard them. So, <laughs> but okay, with the idea that maybe I'll give them to someone. But you give it to someone. It's tangible. It is, it is something that, it is a gift. And when I make my cards, to me, they're gifts. And suddenly, I, when I finally allowed myself to draw whatever I wanted, I found my calling. I literally, my business is my calling. It's one of the reasons I'm here on Earth, is because someday someone is going to give a greeting card. And I know, okay, this sounds really like big. Like, oh, it's so limited. Someone is going to give a greeting card, and it's going to change their day. It's going to change their year. And maybe. Just maybe, it's one of my greeting cards. Because I felt something that resonated. I put something out there that resonated. So, in this, now it turns out, when I was being myself, there are lots of people that like goofy. There are lots of people that like weird. There are lots of people that like that connection. They don't necessarily need a pun, but if they do, if you need a pun, I got a pickle card for you. Um, and so, people plucked up what I was putting down it suddenly became easier to talk about my work. It became easier to make my work. When talking to uh, reps or big box store representatives, it was easy to be like, this is why I make it. This is what I do. And they, they could tell. They could tell it's what I do. And so now my business is doing well. It's, it's good. Um, but for me, now the question is, where is what's important to me? 
So I've looked at what is the essentials of my business. Essentials turns out me. I'm the secret sauce. Um, what is something that I can do that no one else can do, and it's that voice. And so now, what does this look like? Where is enough enough? And for me, it's when one day when I can get out and get my garden back in line. <laughs> like, it's really big. It takes time. And I, right now, I don't have a ton of time. And so for me, this is when I can hire enough people or I can print enough cards at one time that I have open time, that I can go and do that, that I can live my life how I envision it. And every decision I make heads towards there. Um, you know, it's a question of where am I going to expand? And frankly, like how, how does my, my, cause my business, again, it's very enwrapped. It's very wrapped up with who I am and my life and how does it affect it? Can I turn it off? Um, and I can't, like, I'm starting to be able to do that, to not work till 8 p.m. or stop. It's okay to stop drawing just because my business is a creative business doesn't mean I have to do it all day. Uh, just because I'm making what I want for a living doesn't mean it's still not work. And I can pause it. I can hang out with my child. <laughs> We can watch guys' grocery games. Uh, we can watch. Um, and I don't have to just, again, just because I'm creative and my work and my life is based around this creative doesn't mean it has to be who I am every moment. Um, and I don't want it to be, frankly. I want to sometimes go out there and not have to think about anything. It makes it so when I'm thinking about stuff, I can think better. And so this is what I come back to. What can only I do? Every time I'm making a decision, what can only I do? I can only parent my child. Well, my husband too. But I am the only one that can be your mom. Yeah. I'm the only one that can be a daughter to my parents. I'm the only one that can be my friendship side of any of my friendships. I'm the only one that gets to live my life. What are other things people can do? People, other people could write emails for me. Other people could take over my finances. Other people could print my cards. Frankly, other people could design some of them. If I need something, I can turn it over. I can give it to other people in making space for myself. And this is the number one thing I've learned. Every time I invest in other people, whether it concerns in my life or my business, I have consistently seen returns double, triple that. When I hired someone, yeah, I wasn't making as much money, but later on I did. It grew because I could turn over to this person. Um, when I've, I turned over some branding stuff, which felt really odd because I love to brand. I love to think that I know my business. Maybe I'm too close to it. It wasn't cheap. But now I'm able to see clearly my voice. Um, what can only I do? Only I can be my voice, only I can figure out my statements and what I'm trying to put out there. And so this is pretty much, the more I hand over, the better business gets. Uh, it's scary to turn the reins over to someone, but it's worth it. Um, the last thing I have one, uh, well, last thing on this note. Uh, I've recently turned over a lot of my messaging, my email messaging. And I really like to one-on-one -on -one interactions. That's what I love. And to me, an email is kind of like that. And it was really nerve wracking that someone else might speak from me because all the emails are from me. They say at the end, you know, Kay Sawyer, thanks. Uh, but the idea that someone else might put their words in my mouth was really scary. But I started reading them and they're not perfect. Does it sound just like me? No. But you know what it does? It's cohesive. It happens, which is important. Um, it happens, and and this person is able to tell a story through my through my marketing. They're able to do it, something that I don't do. And so, does it have to be perfect? No. Is it pretty close? Yeah, it's in the ballpark. Will it get better over time? Probably, but I don't have to control it. 
even things like that, it's just, I can let someone else, it's their job, it's what she does, that's what she is professional at. I can turn it over. So the last thing, um, I don't know how long this has been, maybe this has been too quick a talk. But the last thing is this works for me. This is what my business being my artistic uh, outlet, uh, selling my art, uh, turning over these things, turning over emails, or even I've recently let, uh, I recently allowed my, my employee to design things for my, for my business, which is like, oh, but they're cool. People like them. So why not? Um, this works for me. This is how I do it. It might be different. Our creative practices are so personal. They're personal, they're private. They are essential. The reason that we're here in this room is because we are creative people. It's who we are. And being creative isn't, isn't a choice in my mind. Um, it just is. And so this is how it works for me. And this is what works for now. Will I always be doing this? Whatever. Uh, frankly, I hope not. <laughs> I hope it changes over time. Uh, but I am right now. And that's kind of how I plan, is I plan for the now. What's going to be maybe a little bit ahead, but I don't know. I've learned that I might be here and I might be gone. And I can make plans for six years. I might not get into those plans. But what can I do? I can make an impact with who I am now, where I am now. So coming back to this, again, I am my business. I am my art practice. I am well, all those things in one. And when I put what I prioritize, what I put out is better, it's more powerful. And when I prioritize me, the other things in my life are more powerful and better and I can take them in more. This, as just kind of a wrap up, is my favorite design of mine. It doesn't sell that well. It's gonna be in my lineup until I don't like the drawing more. But because this is this is it, this is how it is. It may be difficult to put myself out there. It may be difficult to be alive. It may be difficult to create. But I got it. It's in there, and I can keep going. And so I'm sorry if that was really short, but um, that's me. That's it.